Hey guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com. Today we're going to be learning Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. And this has been one of the most requested tunes that I've had come in. And it's definitely one that I've been wanting to do for a while. I just think it's a, a great tune. And I think it's one of those pop songs that has the potential to really last. You know, in 20, 30 years from now, I think people will still look back and really, really enjoy listening to this song. So with that said, let's talk about this lesson. This is part one. And in part one, we're gonna be learning the first part of the verse. So if you guys want to learn the complete arrangement, you can do so at rockclass101.com. There you're gonna get access to part two of the lesson. And part two contains the second part of the verse, the pre-chorus and the chorus. And you guys can also get the complete tabs at rockclass101.com and access to the on-screen tab viewer, which literally you can hit play with the tab and watch it scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop them, slow it down to whatever speed you want. It's just a great asset in learning this song that much quicker. So if you'd like to learn the rest of the tune and get all those assets, it's available at rockclass101.com. So let's go ahead and kick into this lesson, which is part one. So let me go ahead and play just the first part, and then we're going to break it down and talk about it. Okay, so that's basically the first four bars. And what happens in this first part of the verse is that what I just played gets doubled again. So then you get eight bars. So if you learn it once, you've got it twice, or you've got it for each time, right? So before we break down what we're actually playing, let's talk about these percussive hits that I've got with the ukulele's body. So there's two types of percussive hits. There's one which I'm gonna call a tap. And a tap is basically when I take my thumb and I hit above the strings, and I'm gonna hit above this neck. But here's the big catch with the tap. A tap is gonna be, I'm hitting it, but I'm also playing a note at the same time. Now the other one is gonna be a slap, and a slap is going to be when I basically am just either hitting with my thumb again or I'm just going to take like the palm of my hand and slap it onto the strings. So for example, maybe I could have just like that. So a slap does not have a melody note at the same time like a tap does. So one thing that I want to point out too, if you have never done these two types of percussive hits before, I have two videos that's going to help you out. So if you want to learn how to do the slaps, which are the basic one without a melody note at the, at the same time, check out this lesson, right? Now if you want to learn the more advanced one, which is how to do a tap and play a note at the same time, check out this lesson. So let's go ahead and kick into it. But also keep in mind, if you want to make it easier, just remove the taps and the slaps, right? Just learn the melody notes and the chords by itself, you know, and you can always go back and add them in. So if you want to simplify this arrangement or it's a bit too hard, just cut them all out completely. So let's go ahead and kick in. Here is our first bar, and we basically are going to take a C chord. Uh, it's going to be a voice higher, so go ahead and put your first finger on the 7th fret of string 1. And I'm going to strum 3 down. Or I could strum 4 down, doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to strum and then do a quick little hammer on to the 10th fret of string 1. So I'm going to strum that chord and do a hammer on. Then I've got my first hit. I'm going to use my thumb to hit the top of the uke's body and that's going to be on beat two. So all these taps and their slaps, they're all on beats two and four throughout this arrangement. So I have strum, followed by a slap. Right? Strum, followed by a slap. From there, we're going to do the same seven to ten on string one. Just a quick little hammer on. So now we have, just like that again, strum, 
tap seven to 10. And then we're gonna jump up. So my ring finger is gonna go up a whole step to the 12th fret. And then my middle finger is gonna go on 11 on string three. And I'm gonna strum all four strings. So I have two open strings. I have four and two. So those are gonna be open. So now I've got, right? So I have strum, tap, seven to 10, strum. Right, and I have 0, 11, 0, 12. Okay, so from this chord right here, we're gonna go ahead and play 10 to seven on string one, but it's gonna be a quick slide. So you're just gonna pick it once with that index finger on 10 and slide down to seven. So from our strum, we strum, goes 10 to seven. Strum, 10 to seven. So now I have, Right, and here comes our first tap. So after 10 to seven, we're gonna play seven again, but we're adding our tap at the same time. So I'm using my middle finger to hit the first string, and then of course my thumb to tap on top of the uh, strings, or above the strings. So from that strum, this is a C major chord. We're gonna strum, then 10 to seven, tap and pluck seven at the same time. So now we've got one more time. Okay, again. Okay, from here, we're gonna do five to three on string one. Okay, and now it really depends how fast you're playing this tune. If you're playing as slow as I am right now, Can really do five to three but if you're playing quicker you know you can kind of just slide down like that let it fade out and then catch the next chord right so don't think that I've got to go five to three and really make those two notes ring out you're just kind of building an effect or giving an effect of a slide down um, before you go into our next chord so all together now we have Okay, one more time. Strum, tap, step, ten, strum, ten, step, tap, five, three. Okay, there's bar one. Bar two sounds like this. Okay, so we're gonna start with an F6. It's gonna be our index finger flat on the fifth fret strings one, two, and three. And we're just gonna strum and do a hammer on with the ring finger to seven. And that's on string one. From there, I'm gonna keep that held down, and then I'm gonna play string two, and use my thumb, my, I'm sorry, my ear. <laughs> forget what this finger's called. Use my pinky to hammer on to string two, and it's gonna be the eighth fret, so it's five to eight. But the trick is that when we hammer on, so we strum, hammer on to seven, let that ring out, and then five to eight. So everything's ringing out into each other. All right, gives it a nice sound. After that, we're gonna tap and then hit the fourth string open. So you can come back with your thumb and hit the fourth string open. Just like that. So we have strum, hammer on, hammer on, tap, open four. And then we're gonna follow it up with two muted hits, just down up on the uh, bottom strings. I'm primarily focusing on one and hitting string two a little bit too. So you can practice that. So it's just two quick little flicks and then we're gonna make a G chord and it's gonna be our first finger on the 10th fret of strings one and two and then your middle finger on 11 on string three. And it's gonna be a quick hammer on pull off. So that ring finger is gonna go 10, 12, 10. Right, and then you're gonna put it on the 12th fret of string two and play that one note. So it sounds like that. So basically, this chord is ringing out, and what's really happening is a melody on string one, and finishing up on the second string. So if you wanna make it easier, cause that is kind of a pain with that index barred like that, you can just play the bottom. You can play 10, 12, 10, 12. And it sounds basically the same, just a little less full. 
So again, bar two. Again. Okay, so now bars one through two all the way. Okay, so there is bars one and two all the way throughout. So moving on to bars three and four, bar three is actually 100% identical to the first bar. So everything that you played in bar one is completely the same as you're playing in bar three. So you've got that same seven to 10, tap, sev, 10, strum, 10, sev, tap, and play seven, five to three. So let's look at bar four, because that's where we have our first change. We're going to make an F5 chord, so go ahead and put your index finger on the first fret of string two, and your ring finger on the third fret of string one. And we're gonna go ahead and strum three down. We're gonna hit that chord, followed by a tap, and then go to a G5. And our G5 is basically like a G major, like that stock G chord, except instead of our ring finger there, replace it with your middle finger and ignore string one. So I have zero, two, three, and I'm using index and middle finger. So I have F5, so I have strum, tap, G5, F5, tap, G5. And then we're going to have a little pull-off lick, which sounds like this. So it's basically on string one and two. Again, we're just going to go 12 to 10. So it's like the opposite of what we did for the second bar ending. So it's a pull-off 12 to 10 using your ring to your index finger and then ending on 12 on string two with the ring. So if I have those mutes, two hits, pull off, 12. So it sounds like that. If I put bar four together, I've got, again. So you see, when I was demoing it right there, I was adding that slap technique, but you could do the tap as well. Right, either one works, um, but the tap is always gonna be for when you have a melody note to play at the same time. So you can sub out if it's just a, a uh, muted hit, you can do the slap, which is probably the easiest one, or you could do the tap if you're more comfortable with the thumb um, going by itself. So it's up to you guys on how you want to approach those ones where it's just a percussive hit by itself. So now we've got bars uh, three and four. Let's put it together. Sounds like this. Okay, so that's what it sounds like. And basically now we know the whole first part of the verse. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna take those bars one, two, three, and four, and you're basically gonna play everything the same. So five, six, seven, eight is gonna be identical except for the ending of bar eight. So basically um, you're playing the same part twice in a row. So if I play bars one through four, um, this is our whole verse. Okay, then we're basically repeating the same thing. Until here, when we get the build up that takes us into our next section. So guys, that's basically everything for the verse part one. So now we've learned the first eight bars throughout this tune. If you guys want to learn the rest of the arrangement, you can do so at rockclass101.com. There we're going to be learning everything for the rest of the tune, which includes the second part of the verse, the pre-chorus, and the chorus. And you can also get the tabs to print out and follow along with me, as well as access to that on-screen tab viewer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks!